Moon signs are my favorite sign to talk about, and that's because they can reveal your innermost secrets, your deepest desires, the darkest parts of you that you may not know or that you do know and don't want others to know. Today we're going to be focusing on the Cancer Moon signs specifically and what they truly desire and what they need in their life to feel fulfilled. <laughs> Hello my beautiful lotus flowers, welcome back to or welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I seriously appreciate you spending these precious moments here with me on my channel. If you're into nerdy now on everything astrology, spirituality, and fantasy, this is a community for you. But without further ado, let's talk about Cancer Moon Signs. Let's talk a little bit about what the Moon Sign is and how it differs from the Sun Sign. If you want me to go into more detail, refer back to my Moon Sign video right here. But for now, I'm going to give you a little summary. So our Sun Sign kind of refers more to our egotistical nature, whereas our Moon Sign dives deeper into our inner emotions, the way we tend to emotionally react to situations and people, and how the world reacts to us in return. It's like I mentioned in my previous video, um, your rising sign is like the outermost layer of the onion, if you were an onion. <laughs> So let's use onion as an analogy. Rising sign is your outermost layer, then your middle layer is your sun sign, and then your innermost layer is your moon sign. Your moon sign is where the moon was at, what zodiac constellation the moon was sitting in at the moment you were born. Now let's talk about the general traits that someone with a moon in cancer will experience or may experience. The moon rolls over emotions and is also known as the mother planet in the zodiac. So this means that it has a very feminine emotional nature. So anytime that you see cancer in your chart or within the big three signs, you will be talking about very, very emotional nature in general. On top of that, people with moon and cancer will find that they're not just emotional, but extremely parental. So if you have a moon and cancer, you tend to be very well in touch with your inner child and can kind of display that at times, but you're also very parental at, at the same time. So it's kind of this nice balanced relationship between being silly and having that childlike part of your personality, but also having a mature maternal part of the personality. And this actually means that a lot of moon and cancers will find a lot of success in jobs that deal with children, such as being a pediatrician, a teacher, whatever it may be, because you're able to per parent children very well, but you're also able to get along with them and really enhance their lives because you know how they work and you're very good with children in general. Adding on to being good with children, people with moon and cancer are heavily, heavily focused on the family. So the cancer rules over the fourth house, which is the house of family and home. So again, anytime you see cancer, you're gonna see a very big theme with family relationships. So they tend to be very focused on having a very great home life, family life, and building their own faithful, um, nurtured family. They can find themselves super attached to those that they hold dear and because of this they can tend to have a little bit of a jealous possessive nature if they don't watch out but they do hold, they put very high value on those that they love. Moon and Cancers have extremely, extremely in-depth emotions. Now, if I didn't mention this before, the moon is actually at home in Cancer. The moon rules over the Cancer zodiac sign. So because it's at home, there's going to be extremely strong emotions with someone who has a moon in Cancer, and they're gonna be constantly fluctuating, especially based on the actual lunar cycle that we're currently going through it's going to affect moon and cancers very heavily so they're extremely extremely in touch with their emotions and their intuition and it's very important that they know how to channel those positively in order to use them positively in the world because everything means so much to them and people that they hold dear means so much to them they focus a lot on building long lasting connections with other people they don't really want to mess with anything that might be temporary or isn't serving them they're very concerned about having people and things in their lives 
that are going to be long lasting and benefit them in the future or the future for their family. They're known to be very dependent, reliable, sweet, and protective over those that they love. And if they don't watch it, this protective nature can go into being a little bit overprotective and can cause some problems. But they just care so, so deeply more than almost anybody else in the zodiacs. And this can mean that if they don't watch it, this can turn into aggressive retaliation whenever they feel hurt. So because they really internalize things and take things so heavily and are so in touch with their emotions, they feel everything tenfold. So the moment anybody hurts them, especially somebody that they hold dear, they can very well lash out easily. That's why they're the crab, you know, they have the claws, they move, they move kind of slow, you know, they're not really bothering anybody, but they have powerful claws if they feel that they need to display them. Before we talk about some of the deepest desires or experiences of a moon in Cancer, be sure that you like, subscribe, and hit the bell before we move on. Please, it helps me out so much, and I know you don't want to miss out on future videos. Also, leave a comment down below if you have a moon in Cancer. Okay, let's talk about some of the juicy stuff about somebody who has a moon in Cancer. Let's talk a little bit about some of their potential deepest desires or things that they may have experienced that they don't even realize themselves or other people may never know about them. Just like how Moon and Cancers are very family oriented and they tend to be good with children, a lot of this comes from the fact that Moon and Cancers may have dealt with a lot of past trauma when it comes to family relations or specifically in their childhood and it may very well deal with their own parents since the Moon rules over maternal relations or parental relations overall. So a lot of Moon and Cancers have at some point dealt with a lot of traumatic bonds to family. They've gone through maybe abuse or they've gone through mental abuse or they've, um, they've been orphaned or they just have a very complex relation to family in general or they have lost their family and don't really consider anyone to be family. So they're trying to rebuild that for themselves. On top of that, a lot of Moon and Cancers may find that They've had a lot of dark or sad experiences in their lives and have really encountered a lot of obstacles to the point where it seems almost unfair. But this is a recurring theme for a lot of people that have heavy cancer influence in their big three signs, but especially moon and cancer. Um, if you have a sun sign in cancer, you might experience this as well, but it can feel more powerful when it's a moon in cancer. Um, they really, really do deal with a lot of what seems like unfair situations in their lives, but it really builds them into who they are and their life purpose. Because again, like I said before, their emotions and their intuition are their biggest superpowers, honestly. They're amazing. You know, their ability to connect with others. Um, cancer is a cardinal sign, which means that they're leaders. They have a natural born leader quality. So their ability to passionately lead others and have such a resilient nature in general is really built by this hard, repeatedly hard obstacles that have been in their way. They have built a resilience a lot of people may not have because of those experiences. And therefore their contribution to the world or to other people and to their future family is gonna be that much more powerful. And now because they may have experienced dark times or bad bonds with family and whatnot, they can tend to become extremely possessive over those that they love. If this energy has not been channeled positively yet, if they have not necessarily built their independence and worked on those past traumas yet, uh, they can find themselves being very dependent and possessive of those that they love or those that they care about and really hold close to their hearts. Now let's talk about what Moon and Cancers need to feel fulfilled in their lives. As I mentioned multiple times in this video, Moon and Cancers are some of the most deeply complex emotional creatures on the planet. But if they channel this positively, it turns truly into a powerful force that they have to work with in the world. And one of the ways that they can achieve it being a powerful force in the world rather than a setback is by finding a really, really grounding practice in their life. 
So it's important for them to have a period of solitude so that way they can build with themselves and work on their inner selves and work on those traumatic bonds that they may have experienced in the past because with the emotional nature of a moon in Cancer, they can really tend to hold on to those and grip onto them tightly and even though they're trying to use them to feel their lives, they're keeping it so present that it's going to affect their relationships and it's going to bleed into everything else in a negative way. It's important for them to continue that practice even if they do build a relationship, become married, have a family, they need time alone so they can ground themselves. So having a calming, relaxing, grounding practice in their lives, in their routine, is extremely important. Something such as yoga or meditation. It's also important that a moon in Cancer learns the difference between situations they should be involved in and situations they can detach from. They tend to, again, internalize everything that's happening because they care so deeply about everything, naturally. They just care, they care. That's their nature. So it's important that they know, okay, that situation doesn't need to involve me. I can't do anything about that. Not everything is a cancer's responsibility and you can't fix everything. And even though it feels like you need to, you just can't. So it's good to know and decipher between what your intuition's telling you and what it's really saying to you about a situation. Moon and cancers also need some sort of family bond in their life, whether it's just really close friendships or whether it's an actual blood family or whether it's a family that they are building themselves, you know, it's, they need a family there that needs them. Moon and Cancers almost need to be needed by some somebody because they just love nurturing and protecting. It's one of the strongest aspects of their nature. So they need that in their lives to feel fulfilled. You know, if they spend their entire life alone, then they are not going to be truly happy most, most of the time. Not saying that it can't happen, but most of the time they're not going to find true happiness if they don't build a family of their own. But just like they love being needed and love nurturing and protecting others, they really need a romantic partner who can do that for them. Since they're the one that's always showing up for everybody else, it can be exhausting on a moon in Cancer. So it's important to have a romantic partner that understands the way that they are and can nurture them and protect them when they need it instead of the other way around. Otherwise, it'll become an extremely exhausting relationship for a Cancer. And on top of that, Moon and Cancers with their emotional nature are going to need somebody who is very grounded and stable and mature, but also understands the emotions of a Cancer that they go through. They may not understand the emotions per se, but allows them to speak their truth, to speak about what's upsetting them without judgment or any negative retaliation. Again, if you have a moon sign in Cancer, be sure to let me know down below or if you know somebody who does and if you related to any of this, please let me know. I think that's super interesting. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure that you don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell because I know you want to see my future videos. I know you do. And if you love talking about astrology, spirituality, and fantasy, there's much more of that on the LaBlue Lotus Facebook community group. So be sure you head to that in the description box down below to be a part of that community as well. And if you have not watched these videos yet, I highly, highly recommend that you do. I promise you will learn something new and it'll be super exciting. And until next time, thank you so much for being here once again. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.